So I understand when people come to OFM, they massively struggle with recruitment, signing models, and then within that first week, maintaining the models. Because as you well know, normally people sign the models and then they leave. If you've ever networked within the OFM space, that is normally what happens. This video, we're gonna be talking about how to sign a model, maintain a model, and continue a happy relationship within your agency, because that is the main struggle of OFM. <laughs> So when you actually get into the recruitment process, it's not all about the onboarding and what you do beyond that. It's actually what you do during that recruitment process. So what type of model are you bringing on? That's kind of what you've got to figure out. And is it worth bringing that model on board? They might be good looking. They might take amazing fucking OnlyFans fix, but are they actually going to be good at their job and for your agency? Are they going to do the work required? To succeed in your agency so when you're on that sales call and you're you know pitching them and deciding whether they're going to be a good part of your team you have to figure out a few things first of all their work ethic get a gauge of what their work ethic is like what are they currently doing in life so do they have a job now how many hours do they work in that job and are they able once they come home from that job to be able to do the work that you require for your agency that's very very important to gauge when you're on a sales call and if they're not is it worth taking them on? That's what you need to kind of weigh up. Can you market them independently without them doing the work required? That's something that you have to weigh up. Also to do with their goals. So not just in terms of life goals, where do they want to be, but how much do they actually want to specifically come onto OnlyFans to your agency to earn? Are they expecting you to make them into a brand new model to get 10K in one month? Because if they are, can you do that? And that's a question you have to ask yourself whether you have to weigh up with their worth ethic and everything else that comes with it. Are you going to be able to do that, yes or no? Yeah, and is that sustainable? Because like I said, if they want to get 10K in the first month, that's not going to happen for most agencies. We, we know that for a fact. So it's not going to be sustainable hiring that model when they're under that belief system. That's why ambition and belief system is very important, especially when it comes to if they've got a job. Because if they've got a job, and that ambition is fairly low, they just want to make two, 3K or a bit of extra pocket money, then going to that work, nine to five, they're going to have to do their work, do their job, and then they're going to come back to do their side hobby, and they're not going to do it. Side hobby being the OFM, work being their nine to five, because they're going to be satisfied with that nine to five, and the ambition is not going to be high enough to be able to get that money. However, if OnlyFans is their full-time job, then you need to determine their ambitions, whether they're doing that because they want to commit themselves nine hours a day, to that job or whether they can't be asked to go to work so they're doing OnlyFans. They're the two things you kind of have to weigh out when it comes to recruiting a model on that sales call. When it comes down to sales, a very vital piece of sales advice is to create that instant relationship with the client. Texting them beforehand, you need to make them feel as safe as possible so they actually jump onto that call in the first place. But also you need to build up that connection just so when they do sign, if they do sign, you have that connection instantly with you. And that brings me on to the next point. You wanna have a lot of casual conversation when it actually comes to recruiting these kind of girls. They do wanna relax life, that's why they're doing OnlyFans. They wanna come out to you know sunny places like this, for example, this, this is how they wanna operate. They wanna re relax, they wanna have very minimal work normally when it comes to this kind of environment that they're working in. So they're gonna be asking them questions such as, what do you do for fun? And that question seems unprofessional and it's not really something that you'd ask someone in normal business like i'd never go up to uh, a business part of the work in marketing for example <laughs> i'd never go what do you do for fun like yeah. when do we get on the get on the piss but with these kind of models they don't want a professional kind of lifestyle so you are going to want to ask those like unprofessional type questions that will just separate a professional completely professional relationship to more of a friendship and that's going to only build trust and build this but what you're going to gauge from actually asking them what do you do for fun you're going to gauge their lifestyle which is very important if they go out every weekend do coke do cat whatever they're fucking doing and they're completely honest with you then you're going to have a lot of worries when it comes to are they going to get this work done and are they going to be the smartest choice mentally when it comes to working in this kind of industry because that's the decision you're going to have to make exactly because most of the time in ofm you are collaborating with the model to help them with your mark so they're technically in charge of their workload and their successes. So if they are gonna to choose to do X, Y, and Z over working, that's obviously gonna be a drama when it comes to making optimal profits and maximizing the growth on their page. So what do you do? You need to give them plenty of attention when you're recruiting them and after the recruitment process, because this is the best way you're gonna be able to gauge what they're like as a person and engage their commitment 
to the course. This does not mean messaging every single fucking hour saying, oh, you're right, have you done the work? Oh, you're right, have you done the work? Mainly it means, you know, how are you doing today? You know, what are you doing? You know, do you need any help with this? Do you need any help with that? X, Y, Z. It's not gonna be harassing the model about work. It's gonna be generally talking to the model, making sure that they're doing all right, they feel very welcome, and they understand that you're not a cunt. If you're a cunt, they're obviously gonna fucking realize this as you're trying to talk to them like a twat and they're probably going to leave. So if you've got that problem when it comes to recruitment, just just give up and stay at Tesco's. But if you are a good person, know how to work well with people, then develop this relationship with the model to make them feel a lot more comfortable when it's in that working environment. So once again, this is a sex industry and it does require a lot of trust and safety, security and protection. So if you are not providing that to the model, then they're not gonna be very safe and productive within their work to give you content to be able to help you with market the model. Yeah, Toby said it right. I think um, if you're one of those who are like a pressury salesman to these models, you're constantly on their backs, you're constantly doing this and that. Realistically, especially during the recruitment process when you're trying to get them on a call or actually trying to convince them to sign to your agency, don't message them every fucking two minutes. That's just gonna piss them off and it's gonna make you look desperate. Always, always in business, under promise and overperform. So you want to look like you don't really care whether you're having them on board or not because you're going to make money anyway. And if that's the way that they see it, then all you're doing is lowering their standards when they come on board. And then when you actually do a good job, then you can prove to them, look, we are this top tier agency. Rather than bringing them on board saying, yeah, we're going to make you 100K a month from the first month where you've never fucking done OFM before. And then they come on board and they're fucking disappointed and they leave instantly. So I've seen that time and time again, it just doesn't fucking work and it's fucking, it's retarded. Yeah, if you're gonna do shit like that, do it with AI instead. Because obviously you're in charge of all the work. So if you fully believe you're gonna make X amount of money and you have proof of concept of that and you're gonna select a model that's not gonna work and then you're just gonna blame the model, that's, that's on you. Do fucking AI because you are the model and then see how fucking well you perform. If you still can't perform then, then you always need to get re-educated in the situation or the environment or the industry that you're working in to how to fucking get to them next levels because you're clearly not doing a good enough job. Yeah, so that was basically how to enhance your recruitment and onboarding process. How do you get in a connection with a model and how do you actually get that model to sign to you and stay with you most importantly throughout that process and are you going to make the money? That's kind of what you need to gauge in the beginning. And uh, yeah, that is how you basically onboard models in a successful manner, running a successful agency. If you are fed up of onboarding models or failing to onboard models, as most of you probably are, then AI is obviously a good alternative for this. You don't need to sign or send hours of recruiting, onboarding process, etc. Just get on some software, generate a model, and get cracking straight away. So if you are fed up with that, you know where to find us. You've got our pages in the description below, and it's fucking easy to go get started with AI models.